Hey there, Deb Verena here with the latest answers from astrology. Accepting adaptation. Wow, how are you doing? So much has been changing, right? The way we think, the way we're experiencing, the way our life events are happening. Um, if you're on that cycle, my heart goes to you. It requires so much strength and serenity to navigate each day and each moment. So if you're through a lot of this and you're already building the new, I am so excited for you. And um, I know part of that is refining the new and letting go of those pieces that we're still holding on to from the past. And that is a huge part of what we're discussing today. And I love it. My stomach literally digested at that point um, when I talked about how we're letting go of those pieces. So while um, this will talk a lot about the current energy themes, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, um, this is also something you can come back to anytime you feel called to it, because you're not just experiencing this energy expression now, it happens at different points in our lives too. So there you go. All right. If you're new to me, um, I help you restore and remember your true soul expression, who you are from a heart and soul level, allowing you to um, be in that vibration, in that frequency, in that state of being, uh, and clearing all those mental paradigms and karmic cycles and things that have um, made you feel trapped or stuck in areas of your life. Uh, pretty much anything that feels heavy and dense that you just don't want to take with you. <laughs> so as we move forward, a little warm today, it's a little warm, um, and I have the lights on, so um, just bear with me. All right, here we go. So this particular video is a prelude to the next two years of preparation for the new earth. So everyone is looking at this differently. It could be a um, perspective clearing. You're looking to build something completely new and let go of the old. It could be a literal transformation in your mind of what the earth and your reality is going to experience. At the very least, it's a rebirth. And this includes a death of something or change in form, a transformation. And this is why I was guided to speak of this now, because we're currently in that preparation stage in this moment. I'm actually going to pause this and turn the air up. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Back. So let's dive in. Now, <clears throat> while this video will discuss, as I said, some of the current energy themes, it will speak of them in a broad sense. So they are seen with a bigger perspective, meaning a landscape view. Many times we can get caught up in a fragmented view, like we're focusing in on something and we forget to take the step back and see how it interacts with other things. So when we talk about the energy themes today, you're going to see the way they fit into the whole so you can apply them. And that's part of the way I work with these different energy expressions and themes is helping you navigate to get to the heart of it, but then also see how it all fits together. Okay. So now as we dive into what's going on right now, we're going to begin with the theme of acceptance. Now, this is something Chiron has been triggering for over a year. I know it intimately as I'm in the middle of my Chiron return, um, which happens when you're around age 50. And you're working on, um, let me tell you a little bit about what Chiron is. But before I do that, it's going to continue for the next year and a half. So we've been in this theme of acceptance, taking leaps of faith. And we're going to continue with this. And this is in part accepting um, uh, the unsureness of things or the hesitancy of life. And I've shared some videos I've done on this in the past, and I'll go ahead and share them again up below. Note to self to remember to put them there. And um, if you want to explore this further, you can do that 
there. But we're going to begin with this because Chiron is the healer and it supports rebirth with a fucus. So whenever healing karmic cycles, a fucus is the 13th constellation. So whenever we're healing karmic cycles or behavior patterns, one looks here for the bigger picture. If astrology gets you stuck up in the in the semantics and gets you out of the big picture, you don't have to remember that piece. But I know some of you like the astrology part, so I'm going to add that in as well. And as I've said, I've talked about Chiron so much in the last year or so. So links below the video if you'd like to revisit this theme of a leap of faith. Okay. Accepting circumstances is an opportunity to adapt. So this is what I want to focus on or what I've been guided to focus on with this video. Instead of why is this happening to me, which pulls you into the past energy, you can ask what opportunity exists for me in this situation. And I'm going to say it one more time. Accepting circumstances is an opportunity to adapt, another way to say evolve, to move on, to create new. So instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Because this pulls you into the past, which loops you back into mental paradigms. To break that cycle, when you see yourself doing that, you simply change it to what opportunity exists for me in this situation. So I'm being guided to say, take a moment and ask yourself, where is this showing up for you? And where can you rephrase it? So it speaks as what in your life have you been called to adapt? So think about this, right? There's an opportunity that exists in every moment for us. And we don't have to go through life analyzing each moment. And although many of us do, <laughs> but we don't need to. That's, that's not the purpose of this. What I'm saying about this is to recognize when we're in particular situations where we're in the loop pattern to instead say, hmm, where can I adapt to break out of this loop pattern? Where can I break out of this behavior? Where can I break through and adapt to modify what you're doing, um, what your intentions are for a new use, to refine it for a different purpose? And this is a big, big, big part of the energy theme we'll be working on for, like I said, the next two years. And we've been working on for the last year and a half, two years. For many, it feels like it even started back in 2020. So we're in a particular seven-year cycle where adaptation is a, playing a particular key role. And for those interested in seven-year cycles, I did um, talk about it in a blog post, two blog posts ago. So I'll go ahead and link that below as well. Let me just make a note so we don't forget. Now, this often starts with a belief or a thought. So we don't even consciously realize it um, when we do this. We take a look at it and we say, wait a minute, this is circling around and around like water going down a drain, right? And we go, hmm, wait a minute here. Like when we take a moment to pause, right? We go, whoa. Why do I keep rethinking this thing, right? Ah, what opportunity exists for me in this situation? Where can I adapt the way I'm thinking about this? How can I see the landscape or the bigger view? So with the recent Sagittarius moon, there was a call to empower yourself to see beyond the current time and space view. Sag is all about time and space. So when we go beyond what we're seeing in our current reality, we rise, we rise above it. It's a literal energy frequency because we come out of the density of the heaviness of the energy expression. And instead, like a bird, we fly free of it with a larger view of the situation. And I'm going to talk more about how to lift yourself up through this as well. Plus, there's an energy expression, which I'll share below fly free that will help you move through the energy and remember what that feels like. Now, birds, I find, are wonderful spiritual messengers. And I've been seeing a lot of blackbirds lately. 
I wonder if you've been seeing a lot of birds, right? With the spring, we tend to see a lot of birds. So blackbirds have been all around and I was guided to share this with you. So this may have a meaning for you too. It signals both a hidden truth, how we can be a little more transparent or honest with ourselves and a death to the ego. Because often when we're not transparent and not honest with ourselves, it's because there's a part of our personality that is in an archetypal pattern and isn't real. It's something we identify with, we're attached to. And we're like, this is me and this means this. And at some point in our life, we created that archetypal meaning, but it really isn't true. And our experience is trying to show us it's not really true, but we stay stuck to that identity. You know what I'm talking about? Um, sort of like, oh, here's a perfect example. Um, I thought I would be in, in the spiritual leadership role as my full-time employment till I, till I passed away, till I moved on. <laughs> and now I'm in a call center role for a while as I work to develop my gifts. I didn't expect this at all. And Often that's exactly what it is. We don't expect something and it messes with the way we see ourselves. And it may be in our profession, it may be in our relationship, it may be our health as well. I've always had very um, excellent health, except for the history of um, anxiety and stress that I worked through um, many, many years ago. And it's one of those things, and I'll talk more about it a little bit later, it's one of those things where we get stuck in it and we see ourselves only in that light and we start to define ourselves and that definition becomes limited. Now, prior to the full moon, there was much confusion about why circumstances were occurring for many people. In fact, you may still be in that state. It's a common energy response to a new environment that's innocent of past beliefs or experiences because you're shedding the remainder of judgments. When I channeled this, I was like, oh, yeah, we're really clearing a lot of the mental paradigms right now. And that that means the judgments and the beliefs that don't hold a place for us anymore. Right. Now, if you're unsure what experiences are conveying beyond this present moment, you're in the mystery of life. And you're releasing the loops of mental paradigms. So a lot of times we like to feel sure in something. Right. I mean, hey, we're human. I, we're all there, right? It helps us feel safe. And right now, we've been given an opportunity to embody more from our heart to feel sure of ourselves in each experience. And this requires a lot of empathy. And this is a big focus of what I've been guided to talk about for the remainder of this video as my stomach digests some more. I love it. Oh my goodness. So again, take what resonates, or again, I will be saying later, take what resonates in these videos or I've said before and leave the rest. You know, there's a lot of complex energy themes going on and because of our individual themes and our um, experiences in life and our free will, not every expression I speak about may resonate with you. Pay attention to the ones that do. And if they happen to be all of them, well, then roll with that too. <laughs> For those who love the astrology connection, I'm speaking much of what energy Neptune has been traveling through and will for the remainder of this year. So in tropical astrology, Neptune is actively working in the last degree of Pisces to let expectations go and find your role in all experiences, no matter the circumstances which honestly, right, this can take much strength. Sometimes we're not so successful with it either, right? Empathy for the times it's challenging to do so. Because here we are like, how can we let these expectations go? Like they feel a part of us. Now, human behavior is transforming now. And it's taking that mental replay to a new level of releasing and finding hidden truths about our self's beliefs. So it is very much a purifying or clearing out aspect as well. Now, in the constellations and cyberal astrology, Neptune recently entered Pisces and has been supporting you to realize where you've disempowered, see where this is connecting as well, like the Sagittarius moon, where you've been disempowered or trapped your view of circumstances so you, in full sovereignty, can free it and reclaim your power. 
you're the only person who can save yourself. And at times it feels like a big task when we're going through things that are traumatic or challenging. But we forget we have so much power within us to make new decisions, new patterns, changes, adapt, evolve. And we forget that strength about ourselves. So this is a reminder that you have that strength within you. And this has been an ongoing theme we've been working on with Saturn. But the thing is with Neptune now, it's an added layer of transcendence for thoughts that have been replaying for decades. So, you know, give yourself a break. <laughs> it truly is a clean slate you're creating in so many ways. So be patient with yourself. All right, I'm being guided to add in a little light language right here. I can feel it trying to come through. So um, for those of you <clears throat> who may not have listened to me in a while and are coming back, this is something that's been developing within me. Uh, do you enjoy it? Roll with it. All right. So this helps us sometimes when we stimulate our vocal cords, by the way, it stimulates your vagus nerve and it really works through to help your nerves, which I'm going to be talking more about later. So feel free to sing yourself. Now, this isn't a race to evolve. Let's remember that. It's a journey, okay? A lot of times we get caught up with the, I just want to be out of this situation, but there's a lesson in it. So if you find yourself being critical or judging past actions harshly or saying, I just want to get out of this, we've all been there, all right? Lean into that gentleness, if this speaks to you, of your heart as each experience is a lesson. And then this way, you won't have to replay it in some other format, <laughs> which I'm all for, right? See, true perfection is being able to see the lesson that is being taught to you and not getting stuck in the outcome. And this can take practice. And, you know, human behavior is all about practice and repetition and learning and mastery. So take this consciousness journey as part of that as well. Now, I know the way I describe perfection is very different than the way the society paradigm teaches. But doesn't it feel more true to you? Hidden truths here. As always, take what resonates in these videos and leave the rest. While I'm here to guide you, it's your empowerment and sovereign free will to navigate and choose what to believe when and what, if anything, to do with that belief. Now, digestion, which I've been referring to, plays a key role in belief clearing and evolution. I don't know if you're hearing my, my laptop is um, getting older and it's fanning like crazy. I guess it's warm to you. <laughs> For those that don't know, my gifts have been evolving with Chiron, my Chiron return. And while I used to be very detached from the physical aspects, I had a client who used to say when she would come see me, it would be like coming out of the the experiences of the world into the safe haven, detached from it all, and then coming back in. Well, for many months now, I've been embodying the current energy through my physical being <laughs> back here into the third dimensional realm. So when we're working on carrying beliefs, I've been having toothaches or digestive issues have been really prevalent. This is important connected to three ladies. You may know what I'm talking about if you're 50 or older the hormonal shifts that happen there too. But part of it is as well, um, ascension, ascension energies. When we're clearing karmic cycles, like I talked about in my recent video on ascension, I talk about like the sinuses or parts of our body that have temporary symptoms that come through, not repetitive symptoms that keep recurring because there may be something more to that. Speaking of which, as we clear cycles of enslavement to mental paradigms, um, I may be working through a parasite of infection, at least that's what it appears to be. So thank goodness for intuition with all of these things and learning to trust ourselves and having the affirmation, which I recently affirmed a lot of my intuitive guidance through my work with a functional doctor. When we're in a new area, it can help to have that affirmation. It's how we work. And I'm realizing I naturally know what to do for my body. I've been guided to things like pumpkin seeds and turmeric and tur 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 turmeric, turmeric. I mean, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, which supports the clearing. Turmeric, 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 which supports the clearing of this parasite I recently discovered. Didn't know that when I was picking these things up. I just felt I needed to have those things. 
<laughs> and these are things I don't normally eat. So I'll be sharing more of this journey to support others in the near future if you're going through similar things. But for now, let's take a brief moment to talk about processing of experiences. Many of you know I'm doing these on Saturday mornings before I head out to brunch, so I do have a little bit of a time crunch, but we really fit right in exactly where we need it to be. When digesting ideas, your nervous system plays a key role. Something else I'm intimately connected to, a former anxiety sufferer, and recently discovered a new chronic stress cycle as part of a karmic clearing pattern. Thought I was done with it. <laughs> it's all connected to the nervous system regulation and things I'm meant to teach you now and in the future. In my last blog post, I talk about the number three. And I talk about this because I'm sharing a lot of ideas with you. So I'm giving you other resources if you want to explore some of them as this signifies integration assimilating ideas into a new or refined state of being. The energy one works with for a clean slate or a void to create. I'll include that link below as well. As we collectively accept adaptation, this is what I'm referring to. So if you want to work some more with the energy, you want to understand more about it, you can go there as well. Now, this letting go I'm speaking of is what, is what Pisces helps us with. It's the letting go of the stress or anxiety cycles, which the mind gets stuck in, like overwhelm, okay? Depression, all these cycles we can feel disempowered in. Now, a key point here is the way out is through emotional balancing and regulating the nervous system, which is done through practices that reconnect to higher self. I'm going to say this one more time because if this is the only thing you remember from this video. It's key. It's the way out of these patterns. The way to let go is through the emotional balance. And we often try to let go through our mind. And it's regulating the nervous system, which is done through practices that reconnect to higher self, embodiment. Now, I recently started Ketong to help with quieting my mind as simply meditating was no longer doing it. I needed movement to go along with it. And this is part of my evolution. Now, given the number of transition my life has been going through, I'm not really surprised, but this is moving the energy through the body. And as I share this with you, I know many of you are processing tons of changes as well. So find a way to move the energy through your channel. There's no right or wrong answer. It's whatever's working for you rather than let the energy stay stagnant because this is what creates the stress or anxiety. You're going to find how just a couple minutes a day can really change things. Now, if you're already doing it, yay, you may need to do it a little bit more during transitional times, or maybe you need to be reminded that this is a tool to come back to. Another key point, the reconnection to higher self is important to ground you or the activity will simply be movement without peace. I'm going to say that again. The reconnection to higher self is important to ground you or the activity will simply be movement without peace. I really enjoy some of these things that channel through me. I'm like, oh, I needed to hear that too. <laughs> I do often love to hear how these videos are supporting you. So please do let me know if you're enjoying them. Obviously, if I see you keep coming back to them, I know you are. Well, not you personally, but people coming back. But I do like to hear what resonates the most as well. Now, a reminder that peace is what opens the door to a state of being that's in harmony with the life. Releasing the archetypes the ego gets stuck on or in karmic cycles with. I feel like I'll talk about this a bit more in the near future. And to restore and remember what it feels like to be natural, which is letting go of expectations. I hope this video has served you. If you'd like individual support, I am now doing sessions and readings on the weekends. So by all means, reach out to me via email. We'll find what works the best for you and uh, we'll schedule it. I hope you've enjoyed this Answers from Astrology video and I look forward to bringing you more in the near future. Bye for now.